today we will study a multi level bus architecture in a multi level bus architecture different devices are connected across to different multiple type uh, of buses so in this uh, example of multi level bus architecture there are two type of buses the first bus is refers to as processor local bus and the second bus is referred to as uh, peripheral bus the processor local bus is highlighted in black while the peripheral bus is highlighted in blue so what are these feature of different buses and what is uh, what is the concept behind this bus this processor local bus is more costly in terms of area and this one is less costly in terms of area and cost this processor local bus the processor local bus is high speed so it operates at a higher clock frequency for instance the clock frequency of this processor local bus may be 2 gigahertz while the peripheral bus operates at lower speed so this bus operates at lower speed maybe the speed of this bus is 200 megahertz so this bus processor local bus is wider in size it is a larger size so the larger size may be the size of this uh, processor local bus is 64 bytes so if the size of the bus is 64 byte it means that 64 bytes are transferred transferred in one clock cycle while this peripheral bus is uh, narrower maybe the size of this bus is for instance is assume is 8 bytes so this is a wider bus this is a narrow bus it operates at a faster speed it operates at a slower speed and this processor local bus is used for more frequent communication so this bus is used for frequent communication and this bus is used for less frequent communication what can be an example of a processor local uh, local bus and the peripheral bus in our common day example so we can assume this as a motorway so now this can be a motorway and this can be a gt bus so in the motorway you can drive your car at a high speed maybe you can drive your car at 160 Kilometer per hour, and me. You can drive your car on GT road at maybe at uh, 80 kilometer per hour. So it means it is faster and it is slower. And this bus is wider. So it means like wider means that if it's 64 bytes, so it means that in the motorway they may uh, the motorway may contains four lanes. And GT road is narrower, so it may contains two lanes and this processor bus is used for more frequent uh, communication it means that the number of vehicles that are on the uh, motorway are more compared to the number of the, the traffic that is on the motorway is more than compared to the traffic that is on the gt road so now we have different so if you if we if we consider in terms of cost so this processor local bus is costly in terms of design is 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 costly in terms of the area and the length of the bus and this peripheral bus is less costly like for instance gt road is less costly to build and motorway is more costly to build so now we have this hierarchy uh, of buses so this is uh, the hierarchy the processor local bus is more close to the microprocessor and cache and so let's assume that if microprocessor wants to transfer some data if we want to transfer some data to or from memory so it will happen to through the uh, memory controller and here from the memory controller a memory is connected so if you want to read some data from memory so you have to go through this processor local bus the memory controller and we will read the data from the memory and now if we also study the dmb controller dmb controller is a type of a controller that is used to transfer data to or from different io devices without without the involvement of the micro processor so dmb can also be connected to this the processor local bus so now what is a bridge 
so a bridge is a single person purpose processor single purpose processor date converts communication between different buses so it converts the communication between the processor local bus and the peripheral bus so now if what can be this bridge in terms of the motorway and the gt road this this can be assumed as a motor way interchange so on motorway interchange so there is an interchange between the motorway and the gt road so maybe this motorway interchange is in the russia kai interchange or islamabad interchange so in islamabad interchange is a bridge between the motorway and the gt road so now let's assume that okay now this and we can can so this peripheral bus is used for less frequent communication and what are the devices which type of devices are connected to the bus that, that generate less frequent traffic what are this example keypad keyboard if you have a keyboard maybe this peripheral is a keyboard maybe this peripheral is an lcd maybe this peripheral is a mouse so it generates less so the the if if you want if you are pressing one key on a keyboard so you are you are you can maximum press you can press a maximum of 40 to 60 characters uh, 40 to 60 words per minutes and this amount of traffic is very less compared to the amount of data that is transferred on this processor local bus so it means that we need to isolate between the faster devices and the slower devices so keyboard is a slower device it does not generate too much of traffic lcd is a slower device it does not generate too much of traffic and it's also mouse is a uh, mouse is also a low traffic uh, device so it means that we are now isolating the devices that are slower so if we connect these devices if we connect all these devices on the single bus so let's assume what one scenario can be this that we have a single bus let's assume we have a single bus and on this single bus the microprocessor is connected cache is connected and peripheral is connected peripheral and peripheral is connected and another peripheral is connected so it will slow the communication between the more between the devices that require they generate more frequent data if we, if we know that the memory generate we need to read a large amount of data from the memory we, we, we typically transfer more data <coughs> more data is transferred from the memory to the microprocessor so it requires a very faster interface and what we are doing what we are doing we are, what we are doing that we are isolating the devices that are slower on an, another bus if we connect it if we connect all the devices now let's assume a scenario so we have let's assume a scenario that we have a single bus let's assume this is a single bus and now what we are doing we are connecting a microprocessor then we connecting cache we are, we are connected memory controller memory controller then dma controller then peripheral then peripheral and then peripheral and this is a single bus so now this is a single bus instead of a multi-level bus in, in, in a multi-level bus we have two bus two buses bus one and bus two and in a single bus architecture we have a single bus that is shared among all devices so we know that the peripheral are very slow so these devices are very slow so these devices are very slow then they do not operate at a very higher frequency so they let's assume that they operate at 200 megahertz and now these devices can operate on 2 gigahertz so if we are connecting the slow devices to the single bus so what we have to do we have to reduce the frequency of the bus to 200 megahertz 
So if you reduce the frequency to 200 megahertz, so microprocessor will read the data from the cache in the memory at a uh, slower speed. So what's the, so how we can do, we can isolate the slower devices and the faster devices and connect them. So what's the approach? So now these are the faster devices and these are the slower devices. So what's an intelligent approach? An intelligent approach is to connect the faster devices to a faster bus and to connect the slower devices to a slower bus. So in this example, the faster devices is microprocessor, cache, memory controller, and DMA controller. So all of them operate at a faster speed, they operate, they, they operate faster speed and these are slower devices, they operate at a slower speed. So this way, the faster devices and the slower devices can be isolated using a multi-level bus architectures. So, so now today, uh, now we will study a parallel communication. So a parallel communication, multiple data is transferred between different devices. So now let's assume there are two devices. One is a master device, it is a microprocessor and another is a slave device, that is a uh, memory. And this master device microprocessor is connected to the slave to parallel communication. So in parallel communication, it has multiple data. So it means that in this case, we have a 64 byte of data. So in this example, data. It's a 64 byte of data. So in, if it is 64 byte of data, so it is 512 bit of data. So this will start from B00. So the bit will start from B511 up to B00. So this constitutes a 512 bit of data. So this is a 64 byte data and it is connected through the parallel communication so this this is multiple lines so now these are multiple lines so these are multiple lines so and it is a high data throughput through the short wires so this is a high data throughput through short wires. so this this wire is very short so the length of this wire is short so this wire may be short Sure. And it is parallel communication is typically used with connected devices on the same IC or on the same board. So now let's assume we have an IC, we have an IC, and this IC, IC stands for integrated circuit, and this is a microprocessor, is a microprocessor. So within this microprocessor consists of different components. So different components of uh, are, are there in the microprocessor. So within this microprocessor, we have a uh, register file and within this maybe so there are two approaches now let's see we have a cache so the register file and the cache may lie within the same IC may lie within the same so this is used when connected devices on the same IC so now we have a microprocessor IC oh, we have. so now let's assume we have a microprocessor IC so now this is a microprocessor microprocessor IC integrated circuit this is a single chip this is a single chip so within this chip you have a smaller microprocessor and that is connected with a cache so in this case microprocessor is connected with the cache and both of them lie within the same IC so they are fabricated on the same integrated circuit this is one approach another approach is to is to place the cache on a separate IC so now cache so cache is a separate IC integrated circuit and microprocessor is a separate IC separate IC and they are connected on the same board or PCB. PCB stands for printed circuit board. So microprocessor and cache may lie on the same IC. They may exist on the same IC. You can fabricate them on the same IC or you can fabricate them on different ICs and connect them together. So, so now if there is a bus. So now this is a bus between this is a bus. 
between microprocessor and cache on the same IC and then there is a bus that is between the microprocessor and the cache on the same board. So in the IC, within the IC, the length of this bus, length of this bus is shorter while, if, while the length of the bus on the same board is longer. So if we, if we want to have uh, this shorter bus, so we can make this wider and we can make this narrower. So typically the parallel bus should be short because if we increase the length of the wire, so if we increase the length of the wire, so a longer wire will have a longer capacitance and a shorter wire will have a shorter capacitance. So if the length of this, let's assume, so the length of this is, let's assume, uh, one micrometer and the length of this is, let's assume, 20 micrometer. So because the length of this wire is 1 micrometer, so it will have less capacitance and for the 20 micrometer, it will have more capacitance. So it means that if it has a less capacitance, so it has less capacitance, less capacitance. So it is more faster to charge and discharge a capacitor. So it will operate at a faster speed. So it will operate at a faster speed and since the length of the wire is long on the same port so it means that it will take longer to charge and discharge the capacitance so the capacitance so in this case this bus will be slower so the parallel communication is typically better is typically better when the bus are short so longer bus will have high capacitance so it will more time to charge and discharge so longer bus will be slower so longer bus will be slower compared to the uh, smaller bus and also the data misalignment so now let's assume this is a parallel bus this is a parallel bus so i'm now rubbing this off so what is what means by data misalignment i will explain this with an example I will explain this with an example. So now, so now there are two two different scenario. So if we have a parallel bus between the master and the slave, and the length of the bus is one micrometer, and in another scenario, the length of the bus is twenty micrometer. So if both of these devices on the same IC, so if it's on the same IC, so if the same IC, so the length of the wire will be shorter. So if they exist on the same IC, so the length will be shorter. If they are on different ICs, different ICs are on the same board, the length will be larger. So it is mm, less time it will require less time to charge and discharge and it will, time, it will take more time to charge and discharge this will be uh, sorry faster this will be faster and this will be slower so it's it's it's, it's uh, evident that if the length is shorter if the length is shorter it will take less time for the signal to for the signal to travel from one device to another device so if the length is shorter so it means it will take for the signal to take less time from the initiator to the receiver if this is a transmitter and this is a receiver and if the length is less so it will take less time to transmit the signal and it will operate at a faster speed if the length is longer so it will take more time it will take more time to transmit uh, the signal 
And what about the misalignment? So I will uh, explain this misalignment with an example. So if we increase the length, so the chances of misalignment will be large. I will explain this with an example. So let us assume there are two signals. Let us assume this is B0 signal, this P1 signal and B2 signal. And let us assume this is B511 signal. So if the if this B0 may arrive at this time, B1 arrives at this time, B2 arrives at this time, and B15 arrives at this time. So it means that not all of the data arrive at the same time. And it's because that all of these lines are not perfectly fabricated. Maybe when you fabricate this line and the length of this, the, the width or the average width of this wire may be one micrometer and maybe the width of this wire is 1.01 micrometer and the average width of this wire is 1.02 micrometer. It is due to the process variation. So when you fabricate these devices and you want to say okay i want all of these wires to be on the same dimensions but when you fabricate them it's not necessary that all of them are on the same dimension so each of these wire will have different properties so because of different properties so let's assume that this wire so this wire the data are in and this wire data arrives more faster and in this wire the data arrives slower so if, if you increase the length of the wire so the chances of the misalignment will increase the the margin of the misalignment will increase so now let's assume so this is a timeline so this is a time this is the average timeline so if you say B1 arrives at here, B0 arrives at here, B1 arrives at here, B2 arrives at here, B3 arrives here, B4 arrives here, B5 arrives here. So it means that this signal arrives faster and this is B0, B1, B2, B3, B4 and B5 and this is a B5 signal and this arrives Late. So this is a misalignment. So now this is the minimum arrives. So this is the faster arrival and this is a slower arrival. So if the length of the wire is short, so if the length of the wire, so length of the wire is short this window will be small so this window will be like this so if you increase the length of the wire so if you increase the length of the wire increase the length of the wire so this window will have a large misalignment so i will explain this with an example so now let's assume that this is a track one two three four five six seven eight so now we, if we have a race between 8 players and a race between 16 players, so let's assume that the fastest player reaches the destination in 7 seconds or 7 uh, minutes and the slowest player reaches the destination at 8 minutes. So now in this scenario the fastest player reaches at in minutes, destination at minute 7 and it reaches the slowest place reaches at minutes. Nine. So if you look at the difference, so the difference between the fastest and the slower is one minute and the difference between the fastest and the slower is two minutes. So the misalignment here, misalignment is less, the misalignment is more. So now there are two scenarios if the number of data bits so in this case the data let's assume if the data bits are more then the misalignment will be more if the data bits are less then the misalignment will be less so if the data bits is so now if we see if we say so now the misalignment 
is a function of two factors so misalignment so misalignment is a function of two factors function of two factors the first factor is the data width so there are two possibilities that if the data width is for example uh, 64 bits and the data width is 16 bits so the misalignment misalignment will be more and in the misalignment will be less in case of 16 bits now if, if we consider it as a function of the wire length wire length so let's assume that the wire length is 20 micrometer and the wire length is 150 micrometer so in this case the misalignment will be less and in this case the misalignment will be more so why is the reason this so now this i give this to an example like let's assume that if we have 16 players or uh, 64 players so in, if there are 64 players so the difference between the fastest and the slowest player will be more while in case of 16 bits it's uh, 16 players it will be less now if you have now it also depends upon the wire length the wire length the wire length may be case, uh, case of a track length the track length so now if, if we, even if we have 16 bit uh, 64 bit of data 64 bit of data so it means that the track is same for uh, sorry uh, if we have a one if we have a one player even if we consider a one player so if the track length is 20 micro 20 micrometer and the track length is 150 micrometer uh, so the track length is 150 micrometer so if we have eight players here let's assume we have eight players eight players also here and also eight place so now if we have the minimum time it takes is seven minutes the fastest is seven minutes the slowest is nine minutes now in this case the fastest is like if if if, if we increase the test length so it will take more time so now let's assume that if it is 15 minutes or like 40 minutes and now it will be 50 minutes so this is the fastest and this one is the slowest so in this case the misalignment is of 10 minutes the difference between the fastest player and the slower player uh, slower player so now we say we say that now misalignment is a function of two factors the data bit if the size of the data bit is high so the miss the chances of misalignment will be more if the size of the data bit is less so the chances of the misalignment will be less if we increase the wire length so if we increase the track length like we increase the track length like let's assume this is, the track length is like uh, 20 micrometer or 150 micrometer so in a shorter track the, ch the chances of the misalignment uh, or the probability of the misalignment will be less or if you increase the track length the probability of the misalignment will be more so now we will study serial communication in serial communication data is communicated through a single line so it is called as a serial data wire so the data is communicated using a serial wire so this is an example of a parallel communication between a master and a slave and the width of the data bus is 8 bits so the width of the data bus is 8 bits so this is an example of a parallel communication data is transmitted in parallel all of the bits are transmitted from the master to the slave at the same time while in a serial communication the data is communicated serially one by one so 
so for parallel communication if we want to transmit eight bits so we have to uh, we then we need to draw at least eight wires eight wires between the uh, master and the slave but in serial communication the length of the, the the number of wires is only a single single bit and it is only single independent of the number of data so in this case all of the bits are transmitted from the master to the slave at the same time while in serial communication they are transmitted serially so they are transmitted like in this case let's assume so uh, we have 8 bit of data like b0 b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 and b7 so in parallel communication all of the, the, all these 8 bits are transmitted from the uh, from the master to the slave at the same time well in serial they are they are uh, transferred at different time instance so in serial communication so first b0 is transmitted first we have to transmit b0 then b1 then b2 then b3 then b4 then b5 then b6 then b7 so this is transmitted at time t0 this is transmitted at time t1 this is transmitted at time t2 and so forth so on and this b7 is transmitted at time t7 but if you look at this data all of these bits are transmitted at the same time that is t0 okay so it is words are transmitted one bit at a time so it is one transmit one first first we have to send the first bit then the second bit and the third bit so the all of them are transmitted in parallel bit and transmitted in one cycle and all of them in serial uh, communication are transmitted in eight cycles <laughs> So in parallel communication, so in parallel communication, parallel communication, so if you transmit an n bit of data, if you transmit an n bit of data, so how many wires we need? We need n wires and all of them, them are transmitted in a single clock cycle while in serial communication so in serial communication so if you will transmit to n bit of data so n bit of data if you want to transmit n bit of data so how many wires we need we need a single wire so we need a single wire and all of them are transmitted in n cycles all of them are transmitted in n cycles so we have an 8 bit of data so in serial communication they are transmitted in 8 cycles while in parallel communication it are transmitted in one cycle and serial communication is typically used for long distances so it means that the distance between the master and the slave in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, for serial communication so it is this is master and this is slave and this is the distance between the master and slave is long and in parallel communication the distance between the master and the slave is short and it is cheaper and less bulky because we need a single wire so we only need a single wire and in this case case we need many many wires so transmit n bit of data we need n wires however serial communication requires more complex interfacing logic and communication protocol how i will explain this with an example so in serial communication so how it is so now let's assume we have a transmitter transmitter and a receiver so now let's assume that if we have a parallel communication, so if we have parallel communication, so we, we need B0, B1 up to B7, so all of them are transmitted uh, in the same cycle and it is very easy. However, in serial communication, we, the circuitry is more and more complex. So in serial communication, there is a single wire, so we need a single wire. So if we have a if we have in a transmitter we need more complex circuit at the transmitter side and more complex circuitry at a receiver side so now let's assume that we have a register so we have a register we have a register so we need to transfer v7 v6 
v5 up to v0 so what you need you need to shift each bit by bit so you need a shift logic here so a shift logic here so it should shift bit by bit first it will shift v0 at time t0 then it will transmit v1 at time t1 and so forth so on so it means then it will transmit v7 at time t7 so you need some register and a shift logic and then it will transmit one bit by one so on the receiver side we want to process the data so but so you need shift logic the shift logic is used for to convert parallel data parallel data to serial data so what we are doing we are trans we are converting the parallel data into serial data by using some kind of a shift logic because we want to transmit one bit by bit one at a time only because we can to transmit one bit at a time because there exists only a single wire while on the receiver side you need another logic that is called as serial to parallel converter so at a trans at the receiver side we need to transmit the data from the parallel serial to parallel converter so first we will receive v0 so in, in in case we have a register so first we receive v0 so v0 is here then we receive v1 so how it will look like so first at the receiver side we have a register so this register will look like this first we receive v0 and then unknown data in the second cycle we receive b1 so this b0 will be shifted by the right so now then we have b1 and b0 in another cycle so this logic is here this logic is here on another side then you receive b2 so then you will receive b2 b1 and b0 and so forth so on and in the last you will receive b7 b6 and b zero so you need a complex interfacing logic and communication protocol both on the transmitter side and the receiver side on the transmitter side what you have to do you have to convert the data parallel data into the serial data while on the receiver side you will have to convert the serial data back into the parallel data because they, they either the transmitter or the receiver will process the data in parallel not in serial so sender needs to decompose the words into bits the sender will decompose the words into bits and uh, using a shift logic and the receiver needs to recompose that bits into words so it will receive the first bit then the second bit then the third bit then the fourth bit and the last bit when all of these bits are accum accumulated so you have to recompose the bits into words so and sometimes control signals are also sent on the same wire it also increases the complexity so so how what is an example of a control signal so the example of a control signal is a read write bar signal so let's assume that we have a parallel data so it means that if read write bar signal is one so it means it's a read operation and if read write bar is zero it means it's a write operation but in serial communication there is only a single wire when there is a single wire so you also have to send the same control signal on the same wire so in this case the controller will uh, become more complex we will study this in our uh, uh, the next lecture that is called as i2c bus so i will explain this later on later on so now we will study two different type of wireless communication which are referred to as infrared communication or radio frequency communication so this is referred as radio frequency communication so in infrared communication it constitute of electronic wave frequencies it constitute of electronic wave frequencies so there are different frequency range maybe uh, maybe 2 mega uh, 2 megahertz or 3 megahertz frequency or 4 megahertz frequency so in this kind of communication so there is a diode so diode emits ir light to generate signal so diode emits an ir ir infrared light to generate signal so what the classical example of infrared communication is your remote control so now you have a remote control let's assume that this is a remote control 
so remote control so this let's assume this is a tv remote control so this is tv remote control and now this is your television so television so there is a diode in the tv remote so here is a diode so here is a diode in the tv remote control and it emits an infrared light so it emits an infrared light so it emits an infrared light so the diode in the tv remote emits an infrared light to generate a signal so it will generate a signal and this signals will have different uh, different uh, <coughs> different information this infrared signal will emit different information so now let's assume that you have a t remote so your this is a t remote so okay so this is a t remote and there are different buttons on the t remote so let's assume this is a button one this is you want to view channel one channel two or channel three or so forth so on maybe there is also some button for volume plus and volume minus and there is also some button for channel plus and channel minus so when you press one so the the diode will emit an infrared light to generate signal so this signal so it will generate signal one signal one this will generate signal two this will generate signal three and this is will this will generate signal plus of uh, volume this will generate a signal minus of volume this will generate signal plus of channel this will generate a signal minus of channel all of these signals will carry different information so the diodes emit an infrared light so the infrared light will be emitted and this uh, this signal will be generated so the ir transmitter the IR transistor, sorry, the, the IR transistor. So this IR, so here is a diode and it will generate an IR light. The di diode will hear and then there will be a transistor. So this transistor is called as IR transistor. So what is what does IR stand for? IR stand for infrared. So there is an IR transistor on the receiver side and it detects the signal. So it will detect the signal. It, 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 will, it will detect signal 1. So it will differentiate between different signals. It will differentiate between signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, signal plus volume, signal minus volume, signal plus channel or signal minus channel. So the IR transistor. So IR transistor will be on the receiver side. What is on the, in this particular example? So the receiver is on the TV. So it will detect the signal and conducts when exposed to IR light. So this transistor will be exposed to the IR light. So it will generate different signals. And however, we need line of sight between the line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. So now let's assume that the, I'm here and the TV is in the television is in front of me and when I press some signal, so they this transmitter and the receiver should be in the line of sight. So this is your transmitter and this is your receiver. On the transmitter side, you have a diode, you have a diode which generates the signal and on the receiver side, you have an IR transistor that will detect that signal. So it has to be in the line of sight. So it has to be in the line of sight. So it means that there should be nobody intercepting here. So now let's assume that you have a TU remote, you have a TU remote and you press some signal. So th this will be detected by the receiver. However, if some person is standing, so if some person is standing between the transmitter and receiver, some person is standing here and you, you press some button, this signal will not be received by the TV. So this implies that the TV remote, the TV remote and your TV, uh, sorry, TV remote and the TV receiver should be in the line of sight. So in the line of sight means that it should be in this is called as the line of sight. There should be nothing in, nothing in between. Nothing, no object, no opaque object. So now it is an opaque object. There should be no opaque object between the transmitter and the receiver. So if we generate a signal, so it will emit the signal. This signal will will be will be collided with this opaque object and it will not be received by the receiver. However, if there is no opaque object, so this signal will be received by the receiver so this implies an infrared communication needs line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver now we will study another example of wireless communication that 
is radio frequency communication. So what is a typical example of radio uh, uh, frequency communication? So typical example of the radio uh, frequency uh, communication is your TV antenna. So now, so now what's, what's there? And it does not require a line of sight. So now there is a TV, big TV, TV antenna, big, big TV antenna, TV antenna. This is a big TV antenna. Uh, TV TV transmitter TV transmitter and now at home you have at home so this is our TV and Tina and it is a, it generates some signal it generates some radio wave signals this is radio wave this is radio wave signals so maybe there is a radio broadcasting channel so this is a radio may, this may also be a radio broadcast channel radio broadcast channel and it generate a signal in a in a in a circular pattern so it's it's it generate a signal at a circular pattern it's a circular pattern so this is a circle so this is this is called as the range of that at the range of that uh, radio broadcast channel and whenever this radio uh, radio uh, signals has been detected by the antenna so you can have a tv antenna or you can have a radio antenna so if for a radio you also need an antenna for a tv television you also need an antenna so these signals will be intercepted by this tv antenna or the radio antenna and it requires an analog circuitry and antenna on both sides so you need an antenna in analog circuitry on the transmitter side you need an analog circuitry and antenna on the receiver side and you don't need any line of sight remember that in the ir or infrared communication we needed a line of sight between a transmitter and the receiver however in this particular scenario we don't need a line of sight so it should not be in the it should not be in the direct line of sight because the signals are spread in a circular in a circular fashion so in the circular, so all of the devices that lies within this range so if a tv antenna is even here if a tv antenna is here and even if there is some even if there is some obstacle between even these signals will be received uh, by the uh, receiver and it also depends upon the range of this transmitter so if uh, so this transmitter may be a radio wave, radio wave transmitter may have a range of uh, 100 kilometer or 200 kilometer when the signals will be communicated in the atmosphere and these signals will be captured by the uh, by the receiver so you need a transfer a transmitter you need an analog circuitry and antenna on the transmitter side and you need uh, an analog circuitry and an antenna on the receiver side so now we will study error detection and correction error detection and correction is often a part of a bus protocol so there are two parts of error detection and correction one is error detection and another is error correction so what is an error detection the error detection is ability of receiver to detect error during transmission why error happens there are various sources of error so now let's assume that you have a transmitter transmitter and then you have a receiver between the transmitter and receiver you have a communication communication channel there may be various forms of communication channel a communication channel can be an infrared channel infrared radio frequency channel wireless channel it may be a wireless channel or it may be a wide channel it may be a parallel data transmission or it may be a serial data transmission so there are various forms of channel communication channels and protocols we have already studied some of them it can be an infrared channel a radio frequency channel wireless channel or a wide channel and there can be different protocols there can be also different protocols so 
now let's, let's assume the transmitter wants to send some data to receivers. So let's assume that the data that is being sent by the transmitter. So now let's assume that the transmitter wants to the transmitter wants to send this data one zero one one to the receiver one zero one zero one zero one one zero one two three four five six seven eight. So this is an eight bit of data. So this is B seven, B six, B five, B four, B three, B two, B one, and B zero. Let's assume that this data is being sent by the transmitter and on any communication channel so now this is a communication channel and there is some error in the channel so there are various sources of error so there are various sources of error the sources of error may be some noise in the channel so there may be some noise in the channel so the resources of error can be a noise in the channel it can also be some electromagnetic radiation so this can also be some kind of electromagnetic radiation and there can also be some environmental factors so environmental factors so there can be various sources of errors that is maybe when when you send this data the transmitter sent this data and the data that is received by the receiver is something like this 10010110 so what does it imply if you look at this data the transmitter wants to send the data like this and the data is received by the receiver like this so it means that there is some error so it means that there is an error in B5. B7 has been received correctly, B6 has been received correctly, B4 has been received correctly, B3, B2, B1 and B0 has been received correctly. But there is an error in B5. What we the transmitter want to send the value of the uh, the value of B5 was 1 when the transmitter want to send it, but it has been received by the uh, receiver as 0. So so it means that there is now an error in the data so now there are two types of technique to rectify this problem one technique is error detection error detection means that the receiver so the it's the ability of the receiver to detect error during transmission so the receiver will detect the error but it cannot tell you that where the error lies so it means that when this is received by the receiver okay receive receive this data and it says okay now there is an error but it will not identify whether the error is in b0 or in b1 or b2 or b3 or b4 it will not identify the location of the error this type of method is called as error detection techniques this is called is called as error detection technique so in error detection the receiver will be able to detect the error but it will not be able to correct the errors it will not be able to correct the errors so so what is an error correction so what is an error correction so it is the, uh, uh, the ability of the transmitter and receiver to cooperate and correct a problem so in error correction when it when the data is received and it is incorrect it will not only be detect the error but also correct that error so now let's assume that if you want to send this data 1010 and uh, transmit it and it's the receiver receive it something like this 1110 so it means that now this is this data is b3 b2 b1 and b0 so it means that there is an error in b2 so it means that in the error correction so if we have an error correction error correction it will correct the errors so the, the, the original data that is being sent by the transmitter is this the data that has been received by the receiver is like this it will correct the error so it will correct the error is to one zero one zero so it will correct change the value of b2 from z uh, from one to zero so after error correction it will not only able to detect the error but also the two correct error so it means that the receiver will detect the error that there is some error in the b2 and it will change its value so the data received is one and it will change it to zero this is called as error correction so there are different types of uh, errors one is called as bit errors so what is a bit error 
so it means that a bit error means that a single bit of the data is inverted so now let's assume we have an n bit of data so we have an n bit of data and bit error implies bit error implies that only a single bit is inverted a single bit is inverted means if it, its value is logical 1 it is changed from 1 to 0 or if its value is 0 it is changed from 0 to 1 so this is called as bit error so now let's assume that if we have this data 1010 zero, zero, this is this has been sent by the transmitter and the data that is received by receiver is 1011 one, one. what does it imply so there is an error in this bit so this is a hard as bit error and in bit error only a single bit is inverted this is means that if this is b3 b3 b2 b1 and b0 so it means that there is error in this is called as bit error and what is called as bus of error that the consecutive bits are received incorrectly so now let's assume I will explain this with an example. So now let's assume that the transmitter wants to transmit this data. 1010011. One, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. So if the transmitter send this data, so if the data that is received by the receiver is like this 1011000. One, zero, one, one, zero, 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 zero. So this is called as bus of error. So it means that all of these three bits, if you look at this, so this is called as burst of errors and how many errors are three there so there are three errors so bit error is a <coughs> single error and bit of error is multiple errors and how we can how we can detect uh, these errors so there are two different type of uh, there is a classical type of uh, error uh, detection technique so what is a classical type of error detection technique is parity bit and parity bit is used to identify a single uh, uh, to identify identify or detect a single error in the data i will explain this with an example i will explain this with an example so so now we know that a bit error I'll explain this with an example. So what is a bit error? So bit error is a single error in data and bus error is multiple um, errors in a data so now let's assume so so this is what is a parity so parity is an error detection technique so it is so parity is an error detection technique it it and it is used parity is used at the receiver site and it can be used to identify so it can be used to identify single bit errors it cannot it cannot it cannot it may okay so he said it may or may not detect multi bit errors multi bit errors or burst of errors so multi bit error means the burst of errors so how is how how we use this parity bit so now we will study so there are two type of parity one is called as odd parity and one is called as even parity so first we will study even parity so we will now study even parity even parity so now we will study even parity 
so in a1 parity we have n bits of data and one bit of parity and in e1 parity so in e1 parity so the total data is now the total data is now n plus 1 bits n are data bits and one is parity bits so n are data bits and one is parity bits so i will explain this with an example so now let's assume that if we have a four bit of data 1010 so it's, we have four bit of data so four bit of data so how many possible combination is there so now we have four bits of data so let's assume we have four bits of data so four bit of data so this is b3 b2 b1 and b0 so we have four data bits and one parity bit so we have four data bits we have four data bits and one parity bits okay so now if we say so if we have four data bits so the possible combination will be 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 
the receiver receive this, so if it will count the number of ones, so it will count the number of ones. It will count the number of ones. So if, if you look at this, it, it, so, num, so the number of ones in this particular example, so number of one is odd. So if the number of ones is odd, if the count of one is odd, so it means that there is an error in the data. And if the count of one is even, it means that there is no error in the data. So number of one is odd and it is one. So it means that it will identify and error so the receiver will identify the error but it will not be able to correct the error so in this case the the receiver will ask the transmitter to retransmit the data so the receiver will ask the transmitter to retransmit the data because there is um, some error in the data so now let's assume another, let's assume taken another example so now we'll take another example so now let's assume that the transmitter is transmit this data 1110 1110 and 1 so this is sent by the transmitter so the total number of ones are even so the, it's number of ones are even that is 4 and if the receiver the data like this 10101 so it means that now there is b3 b2 b1 b0 and this is parity bit so this is an error in b2 so in the error in b2 so how many number of ones so number of ones so number of ones are three so if the number of ones are three so it means that now the receiver will identify that there is some error in the data and it will ask the transmitter to retransmit the data so this is called as error detection and correction so the error will be detected by the receiver by counting the number of ones. If the number of ones that are received by the receiver are odd, it will ask the transmitter to retransmit the data. So this is called as error detection and correction. So this is called will ask the receiver to retransmit the data. So the even parity or, or the odd parity. So now this is an even parity. And in odd parity, it will be vice versa. So in, in, in odd parity we want to in odd parity we want to make the number of ones as odd so odd parity so in odd parity is the inverse of even parity so in odd parity it will be one it will be zero it will be zero it will be one it will be zero it will be one it will be zero so in odd parity we have to make the number of sorry this will be one this will be zero and this will be zero so in odd parity uh, uh, it odd parity is also similar to the even parity so but in odd parity we we make the number of ones as odd so if the receiver receive receiver counts the number of ones in the data if the uh, if the count is odd so it will be the data is correct if the count is even it means that the data, data is incorrect in odd parity also in odd parity we also have n bit of data n bit of data plus one parity bit how what's the problem with the uh, with this parity uh, mechanism it can be used to identify a single error in the data but it is not capable to identify multiple bits in the error i will explain this with an example so now let's assume that the data is 10111000112345678 okay so now let's assume we are using even parity even parities how many number of ones one two three four so four ones so to make it even parity the parity bit will be zero okay so if this data is being received by the receiver it's like this one zero 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 one one two three four five six seven eight so if the, if the data is received like this so now if you look at this so this is b7 b6 b5 b4 b3 b2 b1 and b0 so if you look at this data so there are two errors so there are two errors errors so it means that two ones b5 and b4 has been changed from 1 1 to 0 so how many errors are there there are two 
errors and if the receiver will count the number of ones so it will count the number of ones so the number of ones will be two and it's even so it will not able it will not be able to detect this error so both the even parity and the odd parity are able to detect a single bit error it is not capable to detect multiple multi bit error it's all for today thank you very much and we will see we will study a different topic in our upcoming lecture